Welcome once again to another edition of Made in Bensonville. I'm Jim Mitchell. I'll be your host today as we have another great conversation lined up for you uh, regarding a business here in Bensonville that uh, is really a great contributor to the business community. We're going to learn more about their success. Joining me will be Eric Treiber, President and CEO of Chicago White Metal Casting. Eric, how are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Good. Looking forward to our conversation. Before we do that, let's introduce our audience to your company a little bit with this short video. Chicago White Metal produced its first die castings in 1937. Today, we ship a wide range of aluminum, magnesium, and zinc die castings to a diversified mix of customers in every region of the world. And we are more than just a die casting company. Our specialty is net shape manufacturing of castings so that little to no machining is required. But when additional services are desired, our capabilities include design services, machining, surface finishing, and sub-assembly operations, enabling us to provide a turnkey product to our customers. Chicago White Metal's full-service offerings can include pre-production total project involvement, including design services, MagmaSoft mold flow simulation analysis, rapid prototyping, tool design and construction, die casting in aluminum, magnesium, and zinc, CNC machining and conventional machining, surface finishing such as deburring, polishing, grinding, chemical treatments, decorative or protective coating such as plating or painting, assembly, testing, and custom packaging. Chicago White Metal operates out of a 125,000 square foot facility along Route 83 in Bensonville, Illinois. With approximately 300 team members, and we ship to 11 different countries. We have 24 die casting machines, 25 CNC machining centers, 26 conventional machining centers, and 10 flexible contract assembly work cells. We are ISO 9001 registered since 1995 and ISO 14001 registered since 1999. Our management team is long tenured, incredibly dedicated, and extremely focused on providing the highest level of customer service in all that we do. Chicago White Metal enjoys a long, proud history of being an environmentally responsible die casting company. Our practices began long before the current cultural demands for sustainability, and we have earned recognition for our efforts. Today, we continue to review our operations and supply chain to innovate new solutions to reduce, reuse, and recycle. In addition to our environmental focus, Chicago White Metal places great emphasis on our responsibility to society and to all individuals. We are proud of our growth, longevity, and the partnerships developed with our customers, suppliers, and the community. Our continuing effort to improve the environment and enhance scholastic achievement emphasizes our commitment to being a benchmark for corporate citizenry. Our corporate culture has been developed and nurtured by senior management along with the input and contributions of all CWM associates. We continue striving to set the standard for excellence in quality and customer satisfaction. Our focus and motivation is best exemplified by our company motto, excellence is expected. Very informative. We want to find out even more about it, but let's find out about you first, Eric. Tell us a little bit about your background. I started at Chicago White Metal in 1990, so I'm in my 28th year there. Mm -hmm. Before I did that, I was actually in the restaurant business in South Carolina, so quite a departure yeah. from manufacturing. Uh, I did my undergraduate work at University of Illinois okay. uh, down in Champaign-Urbana, and uh, I did graduate work at Kellogg uh, School at Northwestern. Uh, married with two children, uh, living in uh, LaGrange Park okay. with my wife and a couple dogs, and uh, just enjoying life. Excellent, excellent. Now your company, uh, Chicago White Metal Casting, has been around for quite a while here in Bensonville. Give us a little background on, on the corporate history. Okay. We were founded in 1937 by my grandfather mm -hmm. uh, in Chicago. Uh, he was an immigrant from Germany and he did a lot of tool and die work uh, before starting Chicago White Metal. Uh, and uh, we were founded in, in Chicago and we were there until 1977 okay. and we were growing uh, quite rapidly uh, so my father uh, was looking for land out west of Chicago and he found a great spot here in Bensonville 
uh, and uh, we moved here in the late 1970s, so we've been out here yeah. ever since then. Now, have you been in the one location, or have you moved within the community? We've been in the one location, and we've uh, expanded two times. Uh, once in the mid-80s, uh, we added on to our facility, and then again in the early 1990s, um, such that we have about 125,000 square feet under roof uh, with right around 300 employees. Now, when you talk about the scope of what Chicago White Metal does, tell me about the type of work that goes on. Okay. So we're a die-casting company, so okay. uh, we're taking... Uh, molten aluminum, zinc, and magnesium, mm -hmm. and injecting it into steel molds to fabricate parts for a wide variety of industries, automotive, medical, government work, industrial work. Uh, we have over uh, 100 customers, and okay. we make probably four or 500 different part numbers for those customers. And is it a constant production line on some of those, or do they say, here's an order for X number, you run those, and then it's on to the next thing? It is the latter. Okay. Uh, so we're what you might uh, call a job shop. So uh -huh. we get uh, orders in for 250 pieces or even 250,000 pieces, and we'll manufacture those orders for their custom product ship that out, and, and some orders we do for stocking programs for our customers and what have you. But it's, it's basically all on an order-by-order -order basis. And are your customers local? Are they across the country, across the world? They are all of those, Jim. Uh, when we were uh, in our infancy, all of our customers were in Chicago, but we are a global company. Uh, we're supplying products into Canada, Mexico, Europe, uh, China, uh, so we're a global supplier. And when you talk about the process, um, you know, what does it take start to finish when a customer contacts you and say, says we need a part? Do you have to help them design that or do they bring a design to you and you just mass produce? How does it work? So they're going to bring a design to us that's probably not designed for manufacturability yet in okay. the die casting process. So we've got to work with them to maybe modify features and what have you so that when we build a mold for them, which would be the next step, that we can make a part that's going to come out and, and, and be acceptable to them. So we work on that design with them, and then we build the mold for them. Mm -hmm. So it's a steel mold from which the parts will be produced. That process can take uh, about 16 to 18 weeks. Once the mold is, is built, we will sample it. Mm -hmm. We'll go through an approval process where we approve all the dimensions and the cosmetic features, and then we can go into production for them. What about quality testing? Do you, are you responsible for that, or do you send that manufactured piece that the that the client will do the testing on before you go into the, the big numbers? For the most part, we're going to be responsible for all the quality testing. Most of that is dimensional okay. testing, mm -hmm. so we're going, to, uh, we're going to measure the parts using various instrumentation to, to get all the dimensions. Uh, there might be some other type of testing that might have to be done on the outside, uh, some type of destructive testing or x-ray testing, things like that we might get some other suppliers to help us with, but for the most part, that's our responsibility. And when you talk about that dimensional approach, I mean, let people know a little bit. If we're talking about a piece for a, either a car or maybe even a, a large uh, manufacturing or uh, electronic device, I mean, these things have to line up, I mean, exactly where the screw goes and, the, you know, the attachment here and the output and everything else. I mean, you, you can't be off at all. Yeah, for the most part, when we're talking uh, of dimensions we're talking in the thousandths of an inch mm -hmm. uh, and some with some machine features even less than one thousandth of an inch accuracy that's required so uh, applications that go into automotive uh, uh, applications or into medical applications mm -hmm. very tight tolerances uh, because there's a lot at stake now you've been doing this for a couple of decades your family goes back almost a century can you kind of look back and tell us a little bit about how the industry has changed and continues to change in the way that the work is done? Well, there's been a lot of uh, change in our industry, really going back into the, the late 90s. Uh, the die casting industry was exploding. Mm -hmm. Things were going very well. And then um, this whole offshoring uh, uh, event started taking place where um, OEMs were sending work to not only to Mexico, but to China or to uh, Singapore mm -hmm. or Malaysia, mm -hmm. and the die casting industry went through a tremendous amount of consolidation as many companies went out of business. Uh, we had some very difficult times in the early 2000s as a lot of our work was sent offshore. Then in the late, maybe around 2008, 2009, even though there were some slow times in there, things started to turn around and um, work started being brought back from offshore as OEMs realized that there was a lot 
that it took to, to bring stuff in, uh, transportation times, quality issues, mm -hmm. et cetera. And I think that manufacturing in general has realized significant growth in, say, the past eight to 10 years versus where we were 20 years ago. And you obviously have been committed to the community of Bensonville for some time. You, you have expanded the location. You've got a great piece of property out here. What about this particular area is beneficial to you? Why does it work? Well, we are uh, very entrenched in Bensonville, and we enjoy doing work here. And we've established some great partnerships, not only with the village, mm -hmm. uh, but also with Fenton High School, as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, for several years now, uh, we've worked closely with uh, Fenton High School, with their faculty and with their students, um, in not only in providing tours for their students, uh, but also providing internships. Uh, for their students, mostly during the summertime, so they can uh, get acquainted with what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, very recently, uh, we actually made a donation to their school of a couple of pieces of equipment that we're going to help in their applied technologies lab. Mm -hmm. And uh, just earlier this week, uh, we were at Fenton High School announcing that we were going to sponsor four college scholarships for uh, four students starting this May. Uh, and the value of those scholarships are $4,000 each. So we're talking about $16,000 worth of scholarships that will go to deserving students at Fenton. And, uh, you know, it's funny, I was going to ask you, because when you talked about the, the work coming back to this country a little bit, the growth in manufacturing again, and then uh, education a little bit, what, talk about why that's important, why manufacturing brings good jobs, and why it's important to have high school and college students understanding these trades. Well, uh, we, we're biased, but we believe that manufacturing is the, the engine that drives the economy mm -hmm. in, in America. Mm -hmm. uh, all industries that uh, support the economy are important, service industries as well as manufacturing. But manufacturing does have uh, an effect on the economy that's different than, than many other industries. And, and it's documented there's an effect called the multiplier effect. So for every dollar that we generate in revenue, we're adding at least a dollar and 33 cents into the economy and other services that'll be needed, whether it's trucking services to move our products mm -hmm. to our customer or accounting services to, to you know, look at invoicing and things like that. So manufacturing adds more to the economy than any other industry. And that's one of the reasons we think it's the most important and vital thing that we can be doing. And it, you know, it's funny, there's so much technology today, so much of what happens in, in business is data-driven. You know, it's a, it's a lot of, figures. How does it feel to just know at the end of the day you made a piece? You, there's something coming out of the shop that you can put your hands on. Is that? It's very rewarding. Yeah. It is not only for our family, but for the people who, who work at, at Chicago White Metal uh, to know that we're creating products that are going to be used uh, in America and across the world and, and that we're, we're adding value to what we're doing. And, and, and uh, I know that our employees feel, feel great pride in what they do. And you're, you're awfully good at leading into my next questions because you mentioned your employees. And I looked at your website and kind of looking at some of your people there, they've been there 20 years, 25 yeah. years. Uh, how, how does that happen these days? Uh, I think it's because we're a family-owned business. We've stayed very true to our roots. Uh, my father started at the company in 1959, so he's in his 58th year. Uh, we have several employees that are, uh, have been with us uh, between 40 and 50 years. Yeah. Uh, I'm just a kid being there 28 <laughs> years. So we foster an environment of family. We have a very strong culture that uh, is centered around um, what we do for other people. So our mission statement is begins with enriching the lives of others. That's where our mission statement goes because that's what we're here to do. We're here to help the lives of other people, whether it's our employees, mm -hmm. our customers, our suppliers, um, the, the, our employees' families, and, and the, the, the society that we work within, especially here in Bensonville. Yeah. We're here to enrich other people's lives. Well, for many years, you guys have been very successful at that. Now, as you look to the future, do you guys do a lot of R&D? Do you have to sort of uh, always try and be a little bit ahead of, of the curve in manufacturing? I think all manufacturers have to be ahead of the curve, especially now, uh, for example, automation, mm -hmm. something that we're looking at very closely. Uh, we're going to need to continue automating our operations to keep to remain competitive 
even with other you know economies, whether it's China mm -hmm. or Malaysia or what have you. Uh, so we look at robotic installations. We look at other automation that we can do to remain competitive, to keep our costs in check. So there's a lot of R&D that goes into that. And it's reflected in the change in our labor force in the past few years, bringing on more engineers with, for example, mechanical engineering mm -hmm. degrees and things of that nature to help guide us as they have those skill sets that are going to help us move down that path. Well, um, there's a lot more we could all learn about Chicago White Metal, and I think the um, best thing to do would be to kind of point people to get more information. Tell us a little bit about where they would go to learn more. Well, they can go to our website, cwmdiecast.com, mm -hmm. and uh, once they're there, they can learn a lot about Chicago White Metal. And uh, they can also like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter, and that they can access all that through our website, cwmdiecast.com. Great. Well, Eric Treiber uh, has been with us today from Chicago White Metal, a very informative and a, another great outstanding company here in Bensonville. Eric, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Thank you.